Welcome back to the series about building the strawberry hanger system. If you missed the first couple of videos, I would recommend that you go back and watch those. I'll leave a link to those up here. These videos are brought to you by our Patreon contributors. Our top contributors are TrueAquaponics.com, GlassBottleOutlet.com, GrowPockets.com, and our latest supporter, Aquaponics.ai. Thanks for your support. Although it's not completely related to the hangers themselves, today we're going to take a look at the potential weight burden that these hangers will put on the greenhouse and the actions that I took to help reinforce the greenhouse uh, for this potential weight. I've pulled the blocks down after them hanging for about six weeks or so, so let's pull this apart and make sure the belt still looks halfway decent. That looks pretty good. A little bit of squishing of the teeth right about here. And that's where the bend is, so there's a lot of force against those teeth right there. Not a big deal. And the rest of the teeth look good from sitting inside of that notch. So I think we have a win with this whole little mechanism. So we're going to keep that design and move forward. So let's talk about the load that we're going to be putting onto this structure. These types of greenhouses are designed to uh, deal with snow loads, um, in our area at least. And so we have a snow load pushing down on this entire frame in this direction. Usually until about this area and then it will then it will tend to slide off. So if we look at this space from here to here, it's about 15 feet. And from one span to another, we're at four feet. So we have the 15 times four feet. And snow weighs about 20 pounds per cubic foot. So assuming this whole thing is covered with a foot of snow, that equals uh, 1,200 pounds. That's 1,200 pounds per four-foot section that this structure is capable of holding. That's pretty typical for um, most of the greenhouses in this area. So what happens is we have this downwards force that's pushing down on this frame. And with the downwards force, it wants to push the frame out sideways because this is trying to go down. These points are anchored in. And so if it wants to go down, sides of the greenhouse want to try to buckle outwards so they want to go this way so, and that's where this uh, center bar comes in and that's used to help prevent everything from from splaying out so this actually has a force on it going in this direction so it will become under tension when there's a, a snow load against it so <clears throat> by having that in here or us wanting to add extra weight to this thing this really wants to come down in this direction so it's not really designed to do that and this whole bar when it gets put under load uh, especially during the summer since there's no downwards force is going to want to try to to bow like this and eventually snap so what will happen is this will try to bow in and it will start to force these sides in this way and technically could uh, buckle um, at this point and collapse the greenhouse. So obviously that's not something that we want to have happen. The simplest solution to keep this from bowing down is to essentially make this a nice big truss. So we'll put a connector like this. So now any of the downwards force that we have going into here will get supported by a force with the extra brackets and that will allow this arch shape to help support everything 
and that creates a whole nice rigid uh, truss mechanism in here and that will keep this whole thing uh, from bowing down. Most of the larger greenhouses that you see will have some type of a system like this. Uh, this is an older greenhouse and I guess they just figured nobody's going to be hanging anything from it and it was just going to deal with the snow loads. So let's figure out how much uh, weight we're going to have on this. Let's say if we had uh, some type of a tray hanging from here. I haven't figured quite uh, what to do with that yet, but let's say if it's 8 by 8 inches, and don't forget we have a, a 4 foot span, so we'll assume that's 4 feet between each section. That comes out to be 1.8 cubic feet of storage in that tray. So just for fun, we're going to round that up to 2 cubic feet. Now water per cubic, if this is filled with water, water per cubic foot is 62, 62.43 pounds. So that's 124 pounds, 124.9 pounds of weight if this whole thing was filled with water. I wasn't planning on doing a deep water culture. I was thinking about filling it with shale. However, let's see, shale is 51 pounds per cubic foot. So that comes to be 102 pounds of shale if this whole thing was filled. Now if we wanted to see what the total weight was, if the shale and the water were in there, we get about a 50% displacement. Uh, so we'll cut this back down to 62 pounds plus 102 pounds gives us 164 pounds per tray. Now I was planning on having six of these hanging from this. So if we multiply that by six, that gets us to 986 pounds hanging from this thing. That's a, a lot of weight. Uh, earlier I had said that uh, I'm estimating this can hold at least 1200 pounds. It probably can hold more than that. Um, but we're getting near the point of there's just a lot of weight hanging from this all the time. So most likely I can reduce this weight down by not storing water and shale in here, but maybe just doing a bare root and having uh, some type of a sprinkler um, with the plants that are in here. You know, the roots will be hanging down and we'll just do some type of a drip irrigation. That would definitely uh, lighten the load up. It would probably only be you know, 20 or 30 pounds uh, per tray instead of the uh, 986. So we'll see what it can do, but that's the general math behind this whole thing. For demonstration purposes, I just wanted to show how these will interconnect. I got these hoops, and because of the existing strapping that's on here, I'm gonna have to pry it and separate it apart. I can bend these hoops. stick it through like that. The other problem is, is that these hoops, I couldn't find the exact size to meet this tubing, so when they're pinched together, they don't close completely. So I'm gonna have to drill another hole in this and bend it a little bit so that it makes a, a tight connection against the metal. Not a huge deal, but just a little nuisance I'm gonna have to deal with, so I'll go uh, bend this to a new shape and see how that fits.
Just discovered that I can't bend them this way because the corners of these are hitting against the bar, so I'm going to have to round over at least one half of these. And as I'm looking at these bars that tie into that, that's exactly what they did was they made a nice little angle in there. Before I finish putting this together, I'll give it a little bit of a stress load. Hang myself off of this for a minute so we can see what it looks like before and after we put that in. And I'll just uh, overlay the two videos together so we can see what it looks like. Pretty good. Let's see what it looks like. So there it is, enough to do 28 feet. Everything's installed nice and straight. And I think it's gonna work quite well. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the details about the structural improvements to the greenhouse. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.